you, Miss Catherine Cohn, for playing for us this morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, we want to welcome you to Piney Grove Church this morning. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. If you're visiting with us this morning, thank you for doing so. We're so glad you have chosen to worship with us. And if you're joining us online, welcome and thanks for joining us. Hey. Do us a favor and take the attendance pads and go ahead and sign those and give us a little bit of information. Pass those on down the row. When they get to the end of the row, just put them in the pocket in front of you there, and we would appreciate you doing that. In the way of announcements, next week, the 14th, is Bizarre Bazaar, and we know that that is that is bizarre. So next weekend is the Bizarre Bazaar, and so everyone will has uh, been working on their crafts and bringing items for that, and so please join us. Uh, that is next Sunday after the worship services, and so that will be in Fellowship Hall, and so be ready for that next Sunday. And then April the 19th and 20th is Trash and Treasure. And that is coming up, so we hope you have been collecting your items, and, and we'll be bringing those as well on the 18th. Um, that is on Thursday, so we will expect that you'll be bringing those items. And again, if you have some larger items um, that, need, that you will need help with, please call the church office and talk to Hannah. And uh, if you need some help getting those to the church, uh, we have some men that can help do that. So give Hannah a call at the church office. And the annual golf tournament, the Piney Grove Classic Golf Tournament, is coming up on May the 5th. May the 5th. Now, that's a couple of weeks ahead of when it usually is. Okay, we had to do that for scheduling purposes. So, know that that is coming up sooner than later. All right, so that is May the 5th, and we need to get our teams together. And uh, also, there's some letters that are going to be hitting uh, businesses if, if they haven't already. And also, uh, some of you will be receiving letters about sponsorships. And I know the Sunday school classes, I believe they're in there today uh, in your classes. And so, if you would like to sponsor a hole or a tee or a cart, uh, the opportunity is there to do so. And we would appreciate that. And also, be getting your teams together. Uh, it's a four-person scramble. And it's $60 a person or $240 a team. And if you have played uh, these charity tournaments, you know that is a great deal because uh, usually it's about $100, $150 a person. So $60 a person is a great deal. And so that is uh, coming up May the 5th. So please, if you haven't uh, gotten a registration sheet, they're right outside my office door. Uh, take a left down the hallway right there on the left. And the sponsor sheets are there as well, or you can register online. Uh, let's see. Also coming up, July the 22nd through the 25th is the Kids Sports Camp. And we just want to make you aware of that. That's going to be uh, coming this summer, so you can put that on the calendar and set that aside for the kids July the 22nd through the 25th. And this is very, very important, so pay attention because... Today, we want you to immediately follow in the worship services, mainly the, the last service, to make sure, like, if you are going to lunch or, uh, you know, and you usually leave your car here, uh, we want you to not do that. <laughs> okay? Uh, basically, if you, right after the, the last service today, we're going to be uh, putting the gates back up outside um, in preparation for Sunday, Monday, Sunday afternoon and Monday. Um, and so if you usually leave, like, leave your car here for lunch, what you can do is just pull it around over behind the big house there and park it and then come pick it up. But uh, after the 11 o'clock service, uh, we will be uh, locking the outside gates, and uh, we got some, some new posts up there and some uh, gates that a lot of men of the church uh, helped put up this week, and we appreciate that. But uh, So please help us out as far as that goes, and again, um, you know, we don't want to lock your car in here, and you don't want us to lock your car in here, and we wouldn't do that, but uh, please do that. Uh, immediately following the services, just go ahead, and especially the 11 o'clock service, just go ahead and take your car, and uh, if you're going to ride with someone to lunch, 
just park over there uh, behind the big house, if you would, if you're going to leave your car for an like, extended period of time after the late service. All righty, y'all got that? Good deal. Are you ready to worship this morning? Yes. All right, let's all stand and take our bulletins. Turn to the order of worship. And let's join together this morning in the call to worship. Come draw near to the Lord. Rest your cares upon God. Open your hearts and spirits to receive God's word for you. And let us pray together. Thank you, Father, that you know the end from the beginning and that everything under heaven is within your authority. Thank you that you are in control of all that is happening in our own lives and the wider world in general. May we trust you through all the circumstances of life. And as we seek your face in prayer and praise, may we learn more and more to pray. Thou will be done in our lives and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us turn in our hymnals to 694 this morning as we sing together. Come, ye thankful people, come. Together we share in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ one to another. I can have your attention, I guess. Looking for praises this morning. Somebody has a birthday today. Happy birthday. So, return from doing duty in the Middle East. That is a praise. We have a birthday. Zayden is seven. Zayden is seven. All right. Way to go. Other praises. Okay. I have a big praise then. Catherine, you want to come on up? I'm so grateful that the Lord has seen fit to answer our prayers and allow us to witness nothing short of God's miraculous hand touching my sister and healing her. Catherine's cancer is back, and, and so she is aggressively fighting that, and the doctors are aggressively diagnosing what they can do to help. How many liters of fluid did you just get pulled off? Ten. Ten liters of fluid from her abdomen just got pulled off. So I know that she's feeling better, but she's still battling, and... Uh, Paul Hunt asked if Catherine was willing for us to lay hands on her again and ask for God's healing presence in her life. So as you are comfortable, as you can come forward, I'm asking that the entire church come forward and lay hands on. And if you're not familiar with this, you don't have to actually have your hands physically on Catherine. If all of us, we might take her breath away for the lack of oxygen. But as, as you place a hand upon her and, and for those that are surrounding her, then the others, you place your hands on the person nearest you. And that way we are all of one mind, one spirit, and one concerted prayer. Would you come forward as we pray over our sister Catherine?
Lord, we ask that you make a way for our sister to be healed. Mind, body, and spirit. We claim your healing presence over her from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. Holy Spirit, indwell her body and give her strength to overcome. And Lord, increase our faith. Take away our double-minded doubt. Give us a spirit of belief in the miraculous. Allow us to claim your mighty name, Lord Jesus. To claim your name aloud and bold, Lord Jesus, in your name. We ask for healing for Captain Combs. We ask that you enter into her body and that you give her that divine healing so that she might give back to us the gift that you've placed within her life. Lord, we trust you. We trust you with Catherine. So we trust your healing. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the blessed name of Yeshua, Jesus our Lord. Let all of God's sons and daughters say amen. amen. As Mike is playing the piano, the words from our regeneration kept coming through. I will make room for you in my life to do whatever you want. I know sometimes we need inspiration and we need a tangible example amongst us. But Catherine continues to make room for God. And all she is, is faithful. And God wants nothing less from us. Just to make room in our life. To make room to allow God to come in and do something that, that we may not understand. And we may not yet even un, be willing to believe. But he can do the miraculous. He keeps using us, my friends. Piney Grove Church. To witness to the truth of who he is. Thank you, church, for your faithful expression. As we celebrate opportunity to, to give to God, we know that whatever we give to God, God will take and multiply. He'll do something with us that we can't even imagine. And I think that he's just beginning to use us in this community. So as we celebrate, as Catherine offers a gift of music, let us offer our gifts of tithes in Jesus' name.
us turn our hymnals to 77 as we sing together, How Great Thou Art. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to have a seat. As you put your hymnal away and 
grab a Bible, I would ask that in faith you hold it up and please repeat after me. This is the Word of God. I believe what it says. May my life confirm it. I like that. That's just, that's just, it gets so excited about that. All right. All right uh, I'm going to ask that you first turn to Ecclesiastes. And while you're turning to Ecclesiastes, I'm going to ask for Edward's help up there. Let's see what we got first, Edward. Yeah. All right. I'm, are you ready? Are, are you ready for the sun? I'm ready. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm ready for the sun. I can't see a thing through these things. Uh, they say, say that you need to wear them. Um, there's so much hoopla going on uh, about and uh, around the eclipse. Uh, Edward, what, what else do we have up there? Um, th- this is one of, of many eclipses, but I don't know why there's so much hoopla going on right now. It, I found some statistics. In the 21st century, uh, there were no less than 200 and, or will be, 224 Solar eclipses in, in the 21st century. That is, if Jesus doesn't come back before it's completed. Uh, there's an average of, of two to four solar eclipses a year, somewhere over the course of the year. Uh, but this one's received a whole lot of hype because I guess it's covering the United States. The next slide shows the one that, that previously covered the United States. Now, a, a lot of folks have just been doing some really interesting things with this one and then the one that occurred a few years further back that said that when they cross over they make a Hebrew letter that is the conclusion the end of times like Jesus said I'm the alpha and the omega says it makes an omega so there you go and it's in it's the end of times also uh, folks have pointed out that at least this eclipse is going through many of the United States towns of Salem, which is short for Jerusalem, and, but not every one of the Salems. It's, it's also uh, going through some of the Ninevehs, but not all of the Ninevehs. And, and I, because these signs are in the sky, folks are really making some radical jumps and determinations. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of towns that it's not going through, like Nazareth. We have Nazareths in, in the United States. It's not going through there either. But because a lot of, Edward, give me another slide, thank you. Because that this is going to be a total eclipse of the sun, people are just, this is it, it's, it's the times, it's the sign of the times. Now, I think that we should be aware of the signs in the heavens. I believe God is intentional about showing us, but I also believe that these signs have been written in here for us to pay deep attention. So Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3. I read this passage at a recent celebration of life for a person that had passed on. She actually had it in her Bible. She wanted this read at her funeral, which we did. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. I'm not going to read all the different times. I want to jump to the end. Uh, you, you've, you've read this before. If you haven't read it before, please read it this afternoon. Uh, but I want to drop down to verse 16. Moreover, I saw under the sun. Everybody say sun. sun. Just uh, under the sun. So we're all in the sun. Moreover, I saw under the sun in the place of justice, wickedness was there. In the place of righteousness, wickedness was there as well. Let me just ask a question. In the place of righteousness and justice, do we see wickedness in our culture now? All over. The signs of the times are here. What what used to be contraband and, and taboo is now not necessarily just accepted, but it is affirmed and celebrated. It's a dark time in which we live. Verse 17, so I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked, for he has appointed a time for every matter and for every one. God will judge. 
I think that we make sometimes mistakes of looking at God one way or another without understanding the enormity of God. I think some people do embrace God as a loving father, coddling us all the time. But that loving father still loves us enough to discipline us and get us back in. Uh, God is not one of those entitlement father figures. He teaches us for our good. But God is also a righteous judge. Now, I try to picture God as a judge, and I guess my picture is, you know, the gray-haired guy sitting in there. I, I know what he's not. I, I know he's not Flip Wilson. He come to judge. He come to judge. It's just not, nothing like that. I, I, I know he's not Judge Judy that just rules with an iron fist. You know, when you're in her courtroom, nothing else matters. You know, and I, it, God judges with righteousness and true justice. But God will judge because he's given us his word. We're expected to know this word. So let's go back to the beginning. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be signs for the season for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he also made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate light from darkness. God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning. The fourth day. The which day? The, the fourth day? The fourth day. So God made the great lights to mark the seasons and the stars on, on the fourth day. Let me back up a bit. Go to verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. A wind, the breath, the ruah of God swept over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. Now, if the lights were here on the first day, why did God make them again on the fourth day? I don't have a good answer for that. I really don't. But I do believe our Bible is to give us concrete instruction, signs of the times. It's my belief that those first five verses in Genesis are for us to understand the concept that every good Hebrew would have understood. Light represents godliness and holiness. But dark represents the absence of God or evil. The days are evil, my friends. The signs are ever before us. There's another little passage in Genesis that I'm going to have us read. It's chapter 8, so turn over a few pages to the right Chapter 8. I'm going to start reading from verse 20, but before I start reading, just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Would you say today in our culture, it's kind of wicked? I just wanted to check, make sure that we're all there, all right? We're wicked. In the days in which Noah lived, wickedness covered the face of the earth. And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and he took every clean animal and every clean bird and made offerings. And the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, and God said, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. Even for the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. For all of those doomsday folks that are telling us it's the end of the world, God made a promise. He's never going to destroy everything like he did before. However, 
if we go to Revelation, we do find out there is an end coming sometime. Now, I wrote down Revelation 16, and I wrote down that. I'm, I'm not going to have us turn there because it's just too scary. I mean, it really is. At chapter 16 of Revelation, it's at the end of the opening of the seven seals, then the blowing of the seven trumpets, then the pouring out of the seven bowls, and, and each one gets decidedly more intense with recognition of the end that will come. I, I want to paint a better picture because in the end, God really does win and it's really good. So I'm just going to take us all the way to Revelation chapter 21. If you will, Revelation 21. John's vision from God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is now among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. The first things have passed away. The one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. This should be good news for us. The way the world is right now will not last forever. God's going to recreate it and make it good. But, everybody say but. There is something coming. And, and, and the signs of the times are that we should be aware that something's coming. Or better yet, someone. So turn to Matthew chapter 24. And this is really the important part of our takeaway today. Matthew 24, because most of what I'm going to read is in you that have red letter Bibles. It's in bold red letters. It comes right out of Jesus' mouth. I want to back up and start with verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us when this will be. What will be the sign? Everybody say sign. sign. What will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? I want to know that sign too. I do. I want to know the sign. I, I want to be able to clearly tell when Jesus is returning. Jesus says, beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead you astray. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do not be alarmed. This must take place. The end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes, but all this is just the beginning of the birth pangs. They'll hand you over to be tortured, even put to death. You will be hated by nations because of my name. Many will fall away. They will betray one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead people astray. Because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news, that is the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the entire world as a testimony to the nations, and then the end will come. Here's my take on it. Until everyone has heard the gospel message, Jesus is waiting. Sometimes I think he's waiting on us to get the gospel message out. But when everybody on the face of the earth has had the opportunity to hear and repent and believe, I don't think it's the end yet, but it's coming. Verse 29. Immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. That sounds like an eclipse to me. It really does. It's right out of Joel 
the prophet Joel. It's my opinion. And the gospel writer Luke says that when Jesus hung on the cross, it was dark from noon until three. I truly believe there was a solar eclipse when Jesus was crucified. Yes, they are. Elder, give me that last slide if you don't mind. Yes, these are signs of the times. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Verse 36. But about that day and hour no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Verse 43. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what that day is, the day of the Lord's coming. Verse 44, therefore, you must be ready for the Son, the Son of Man, is coming in an unexpected hour. By the way, when he comes, these are not going to help you out. When he comes, this is the only thing that's going to matter. It needs to be in your heart. It needs to be in your head. It needs to be so a part of you that when we see the clouds roll back as a scroll, we hear the trumpet call, and we see the armies of heaven. Come. We are not afraid. Actually, we are rejoicing because our redemption, our Lord, is coming. I think we need to be much more excited and enthusiastic and overwhelmed about the return of Christ than we do about a three and a half minute solar eclipse. That's just my opinion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask you to close your Bibles as we prepare for Holy Communion. As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, I want to share with you, everybody is invited to the Lord's table. You don't necessarily have to be a member of our church. You come in faith. What we're going to do in just a little while is invite folks to come, beginning with the folks in the back. And then you can come down to the altar. You can kneel if you are physically able and prefer. Or you're welcome to stand there. The celebrants will be offering you the loaf of bread, and you tear off a portion of the bread, which is the body of Christ. Then you'll be offered a, a little small cup out of a tray, and you drink that, and that is the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of sins. Now, if you're not comfortable with the common loaf, there are individual hygienic communion sets right here on the altar. You just come and be present like everybody else, and you receive your communion through one of those. When Jesus was with his disciples, he used the term son of man repetitively, came right out of the prophet Daniel. When Jesus claimed to be the Son of Man, they understood that he is the Messiah. Jesus said, one day, the Son of Man will return. When Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and then he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, share this amongst yourselves. This is now my body, my body which is broken and given for you. When you eat this bread, remember me. Jesus took the third cup of the Passover meal, blessed it and gave thanks. And then he said, drink from this cup, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. And my blood forgives sins even the sins of the entire world. When you drink this cup, remember me. My friends, when we come to this table this morning, we remember all that Jesus said, all that Jesus did, 
even his death upon a cross for us. But on this day, I'm asking that we remember the words that he promised. He's coming back for his church. May we be ready. Holy Spirit, pour out your power over these elements. May they be for us the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, that as we receive, we might be reminded that until you return, Lord Jesus, we, the church, are the light of Christ for all the world to see. All honor and glory is yours. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Dan, Logan, Shana, and Andy, did y'all come? with the folks in the back if you will come to the altar kneel if you are physically able or stand receive both the body and the blood of Christ be thankful for what God has done and be hopeful and expecting for what God will do
as Pastor Mike gets prepared to close us in worship, the thought occurred to me that a lot of excitement happening around here, and it's quite possible here in Hot Springs National Park, it's going to be cloudy tomorrow, <laughs> right? I said that. But that old great hymn that we used to sing on that cloudless day, I just thought about it, on that unclouded day when Jesus is coming back, because the clouds are going to be rolled back away, right? So it'll be cloudless. And I was like, I just thought about that. I'm so excited about the return of God. Listen, folks, there is some truth to the signs in the sky. We truly do need to be aware that God is trying to get our attention but may he get our attention through the Holy Spirit by studying and reading his word and knowing that we are spiritually prepared and ready and excitedly anticipating the return of Christ. If not, see me after church and let's talk about how you too can get on fire and enthused about his return. Let's stand together and turn on our hymnals to 368 as we sing, My Hope is Built. church we are blessed in order to be a blessing by sharing the gospel the good news of jesus christ i hope you get to see the sun <laughs> have a good week